Today, the rental stress pips are squeaking. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics One. That is post covering finance and property news. Well, last Tuesday, I ran a live show when I went through my latest financial stress modeling and I discussed what it all means. Now, I didn't have a chance in that show to go through the specifics with regard to mapping around rental stress. And in fact, rental stress is a very significant topic. And I had quite a few people after that show ask if I could share more detailed information about the whole question of rental stress and how things are playing out. So that's what I'm going to do today in this show. And for those who haven't caught up with what we do, I'm just going to quickly recount again the basis of our analysis and summarize the top level rental stress and then go into the detail down at the individual postcode level. There's a reason why this is so important, and it's simply this, that there are more and more households really up against it when it comes to paying the rent. And of course, we measure stress in terms of cash flow, and uh, we are seeing more and more households in the rental sector with cash flow problems, and this is creating huge issues for them. Now, quickly, our model takes our survey information and we put it through our core market model, and that gives us the information down to the postcode level. And we can slice and dice the data all sorts of different ways. And for those who have, again, not caught up, I don't use a specific 30% metric of income. I look at money in and money out. And if they have more money going out than money coming in, that means they have a stress problem, it means they have to prioritize. And every household, of course, will make different decisions. We also have that information expressed both as a percentage of households and also the count. And for many circumstances, I think the count is a better measure because it's the law of big numbers, but the percentage is also quite important too. And in this analysis, we're going to actually look at the mapping both from a percentage perspective and also from a count perspective because you don't necessarily get the same picture when you look at it on those two dimensions. Now, just to recap again, the overall stress metric for the rental sector is extremely high. It's 76.92% of all those in the rental sector. It's much higher actually than mortgage stress, which is around 50%. So you can see that those in the rental sector are really under the pump. And at the aggregate level, you can see there that whilst there is 1.8 million households in mortgage stress across the country, we've got 2.3 million households in rental stress. And you can see there that the highest proportion of households in rental stress at more than 83.6% in New South Wales. Then we have the ACT at 83.46%. And then we drop down to 75.12% in Victoria, 71.9% in Western Australia, and small accounts in other states. The aggregate, though, at 76.92 is as high as it's been. And here is the summary data for rental stress showing the, the centre of Melbourne, postcode 3000, with more than 14,900 there in stress, carry it from a numbers perspective, followed by Liverpool in New South Wales and Toowoomba in Queensland, Westmead in New South Wales, Southport in Queensland, Cooma in Queensland, Tarnet in Victoria, Zetland in New South Wales, Campbelltown in New South Wales, Derrimont and Point Cook in Victoria, Bundaberg in Queensland, Blacktown in New South Wales, Mount Druitt in New South Wales, Parramatta in New South Wales, and Ipswich up in Queensland, and Gosford in New South Wales. So they're the top counts. Now what I'm going to do is to share my mapping data to show how this works down on the ground. And what we'll do for each state is to start with the count of households and then cut across to look at the percentage of households. And you can see as we do that, that there are some quite interesting variations. So here's rental stress in New South Wales. And as always, the blues are low counts and the yellows, the oranges and reds are the higher counts. 
And you can see here that postcode 2000 and 2010 are actually showing up as under significant pressure. And as we pull out, we find that places like Bondi Beach and North Bondi, Waterloo, Greenwich and St. Leonard's and Crow's Nest are also registering. And I will highlight that the yellows are showing that even in a broad range of postcodes, we are seeing significant degrees of rental stress. As we pull out, we can see there that places like Westmead or Parramatta or Liverpool are also showing considerable pressures too. And this is quite consistent with what we've been seeing for mortgage stress, where a lot of the counts are highest in the West. But I would highlight again that there are considerable pressures closer in to the centre of Sydney as well. And as we pull out further, the story continues, Campbelltown there. And as we look out a little further still, we can see the ring of fire to the west, but also problems close in. Now, if we turn to the percentage of households in rental stress, we get a slightly different picture. You can see here that in and around 2000, the percentages are a little lower, but further out around Paddington and Potts Point, Roselle and Balmain and Permont and Glebe, we see quite high counts. But as we pull out and look at places like Val Cluse, for example, and Point Piper, very affluent areas, we see high counts there and even up at Neutral Bay and North Sydney. Plus, of course, 2046 over towards Chiswick and Canada Bay. And in fact, as we pull out further, we can see that there is an inner ring around the CBD from Tempe and St. Peter's to Strathfield to Glazeville and up towards Narrenburn and Camaray, where there are very high proportions of households in rental stress. And in fact, from a percentage perspective, it's much more of a patchwork than what we saw from the counts. This is a subject, of course, driven by population density versus proportion of households. But you would conclude, as we pull out further, that the rental stress pressures in and around Sydney are pretty extreme, not universal, but even going up to the hills and Hornsby, across towards Penrith and Liverpool, and down towards Campbelltown and Wollongong. Rental stress is a really big deal, and it also continues up into the Blue Mountains and that area too. Jumping across now to Victoria and looking at the rental counts, as mentioned earlier on, Postco 3000 holds the prize for the highest count. And as we pull out, we see that South Bank is also a problem area. And there are a number of other pressure points across the central business district and beyond, but nowhere near as high until we see Wyndham coming out to the west and Greater Dandelong to the east. And in fact, down towards Casey. 3977 as well. If we go to the centre of Melbourne and now turn to the percentage of households in rental stress, 3,000 doesn't come out so badly because, of course, the population density is very high. As we pull out, we can see that places like Mooney Valley and Princes Hill, Alphington are all registering. And there are some very specific hotspots like Melton, for example. And further to the east and to the west and down towards Dandelong again and Casey. I'd also make the point that further out, whether you look to the west or the east, there are areas where there are large proportions of households, more than 95%, with rental stress pressure. 
If I switch across to look at Brisbane, remember that the population densities tend to be a little lower relative to Sydney. We can see that close in Highgate Hill and Fortitude Valley, there are quite high counts of those in rental stress. Quite a few of those areas, of course, are high rise as well, which increases the population density. And as we come out, we can see that there are other pressure points around the place, although generally not as severe as we saw in Sydney, for example. However, Ipswich does come into picture and also postcode 4300 and even down on the Gold Coast as well. So there are hot spots, and it's interesting that 4209 stands out as a very significant pressure point as well as Toowoomba 4350 in and around Brisbane. The percentages close in aren't too bad. We're talking here at 69 to 86%, those sort of ranges. But as we pull out, we can see places with much more pressure like Barden and the Gap. Or 4174. And as we continue to pull out, we can see that there again is this outer ring of significant pressure. Point to understand here is that this is a combination of population density on one hand, but also overall incomes on the other. Ipswich, of course, stands out. And as we pull out, we can see that places like the Gold Coast or indeed Toowoomba are also there as well. Jumping across to Adelaide and looking at the rental counts there, we can see that once again, population density is lower, but there are still some households who are finding significant pressures. The overall counts, though, are quite considerably lower in and around Adelaide relative to, for example, Victoria or even New South Wales. Adelaide, which you will recall from a count perspective was relatively low, tells a different story in percentage terms. There are quite a few inner suburban areas around Adelaide where there are high counts from Keswick, 5035, Eastwood, Parkside, round to Transmere, Nailsworth, or even Port Adelaide, and Fulham Gardens and West Beach. This is a much more concerning picture than you might have expected to see, given the relatively low counts. But this is because the population density is a lot lower. But there are many people in and around Adelaide who are really up against it in cash flow terms in the rental sector. Jumping across to Perth and looking at rental counts there, we can see that closer into the centre of town, the counts are relatively benign. And that pattern is replicated as we pull out. But of course, part of this is also a subject of the population density. And I would highlight that the counts are relatively low, but as we will see shortly, Perhaps the percentage tells us a bit of a different story. We can see that close in, things aren't too bad. But as we pull out, we start to see quite a few areas where the counts are very high. Mount Clermont, for example, Wembley, Cambridge, to the north, Daniela, City Beach, and to the south, St. James. Even East Fremantle is there, not quite so high. And as we go to the south and to the north, down the coastal strip, we can see that there are high proportions of people with significant pressure from a rental perspective. Rents, of course, have been climbing quite fast in the west, thanks to high demand and limited supply. And finally, we'll just look at Hobart. And once again, the population density means that the counts are relatively lower compared with Sydney or Melbourne, as you'd expect. But you can see that there are some areas where the counts are a little higher, particularly to the north of Hobart and over towards Mornington. The percentage of households in rental stress, once again, we can see that there are quite significant pressures, not universally spread, but over towards the Montague Bay area, Bell Reef, South Hobart, and Tolman's Hill and Mount Nelson in particular, and Fern Tree and Rosetta and Montrose are very much a standout, together with Mount Runby and Cambridge. So, once again, 
it's worth highlighting that the story in percentage terms is quite different from the population density of based count. So what does this tell us? Well, this tells us two things. Firstly, it's very important to look at the, both the percentage and the counts to get a balanced picture. Secondly, that the pressure on households is not uniformly spread, but there are some postcodes where a vast number of people are actually struggling and a high proportion of people are struggling with rents at the moment. And of course, there's very little relief. Rents are still rising, even if slightly lower. And the latest CPI showed that rentals are still rising. So that's just a quick summary today of what's going on and why this is important. So many people are up against it. I don't believe that state and federal governments are taking serious enough the rental pressures that people are under. And whilst there have been some levels of support through the government support schemes for the rental sector, it's probably not sufficient for the many people. One reason why we are seeing a lot of people work extra hours and trying to generate more income to cover the costs of somewhere to live. And as I showed in my earlier analysis, if you look at it in percentage terms, in some of these postcodes, people are putting 40, 50, 60% or even more of their total income just to pay the rent, which frankly is unsustainable. And yet my expectation is that rentals will continue to climb. Now, in a future show, I will also cover mapping relating to the financial stress story and investor stress because I had significant requests for those too. But that'll do for today. So I hope you found this informative and interesting, but also it should raise concerns and it shows that there needs to be more policy interventions, in my view, to deal with the massive rental crisis. And of course, the rental crisis is directly linked to too high migration, which should be dialed back. And despite all the words, it really isn't. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.